Hello, brothers and sisters. This is Kevin Cosby here at St. Stephen Baptist Church in Louisville, Kentucky, with another powerful point to ponder. Why? Because every day we have covenant to spend some meaningful moments with the master by looking at God's word. And this week has been an exciting week and I wanna thank you for being with us this entire week. Uh, I've already received some tweets and some other emails about how the powerful points to ponder are blessing you and I'm glad to know that they're blessing you, but I'm not surprised because anytime we look at God's word together, you're always gonna be blessed by the word of God. So we're in this series on how to get your mind to mind during this pandemic. And uh, we're, we're looking what Paul says in one of the most inspirational chapters in the entire Bible. And that's the fourth chapter of Philippians. Some of you who've been with us since Monday are probably now saying, now I have found my favorite chapter. Well, guess what? You, you, we're going to look at some other things and that might become your favorite chapter. In fact, when you understand the entire word of God, you're going to say the entire book is my favorite. It's my favorite. And so already we've looked at the things you have to do to stay mentally stable and sane during the pandemic. And some of the things that you have to do is we looked at you have to rejoice in your union with the Lord. Rejoice. Find your joy in the Lord. If you find it in your home, you can lose it. Finding your job, you can lose it. Finding your health, you can lose your health. The Lord is the only person who will always be with you. Even when you're walking through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? For thou art with me. Rejoice in the Lord. Practice the presence of the Lord. Paul says, let your moderation be known unto me, and the Lord is at hand. Act like God is with you because God is with you. Don't worry. Don't be anxious about tomorrow. What am I going to, what am I going to eat? And how am I going to pay my bills? Just live one day at a time. And then prayer, talk to God, listen to God. As Reverend A. Russell Alkert here in Louisville, Kentucky, New Zion Baptist Church said, little prayer, little power, much prayer, much power, no prayer, no power. Now let's look at what? The fifth principle on how to keep your mind minding during a pandemic. And that is, look if you will at Philippians chapter four, verse six again. It says, don't worry about anything. That's one of the principles. But in all your prayers, ask God for what you need. Pray, always asking with a thankful heart. Develop a heart of thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is not just a day in November. For those who keep their mind together, they have an attitude of gratitude every day, not an attitude of entitlement, but an attitude of gratitude. And let me tell you something about grateful people who are truly grateful. First of all, they're happier because they're focusing on not what they lost, but what they have left. And God always leaves you something, not what you lost, but what you have left. You may have lost your job, but you still have so much left that you can be thankful for. Grateful people are happier people. Grateful people are also healthier people. Something about being grateful and learning to rejoice in the goodness of God that releases something into your bloodstream that produces true happiness and health. So grateful people are healthier, they're happier, and guess, and guess what? They also are holier. You're holier. Paul not only says to rejoice in, always. And he, all, he not only says, be thankful in Philippians chapter four, verse six, but he also said it again in verse Thessalonians chapter five and verse 18, where he says, be thankful in all circumstances. 
Be thankful. Now, he's not a hypocrite because he's in jail when he's telling us to be thankful. He's on death row when he's telling us to be thankful. And uh, he is rejoicing. He's has got so much joy overflowing in his life. And it's due to the fact that he's learned something to be thankful about. Paul says, be thankful in all circumstances. Now, he did not say be thankful for all circumstances. He doesn't say be thankful because you're unemployed. He doesn't say thankful because you have COVID-19. He doesn't say be thankful because you're planning the funeral of someone you love. He's not saying be thankful for it. He's saying that be thankful in it, that in all circumstances, in all situations, you can be thankful in it. Why? Because we know that all things are working together for good for them that love the Lord. Be thankful. If God doesn't do another thing, God has already done so much and is still doing so much. And we are so blessed so abundantly. Oh my God. I, I, um, I've got a television program that I, I watch. It's a 60s program uh, called The Fugitive. And I watch it um, at night and it, I just like, it just kind of relaxes me. But there was one episode in which they had all these computers and they really thought they were doing something because they were trying to use a, a scientific data uh, to determine where the fugitive might be. And then I told my wife when we were watching that, I said, you know what? My cell phone has more capacity than all those computers. My little cell phone, your cell phone has more capacity than all those computers that they were using uh, back in the 60s. You know, we've been blessed. There's so much to be thankful for. We've got so much. Um, I once heard about a little boy who his, 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 his mama cut him a nice piece of cake and gave it to him. And he was shocked. And he, he said, thank you, mommy. Thank you, mommy. And she said, well, Johnny, it means so much to me when you get the piece of cake and you say, thank you. That meant so much to me that you just didn't take the cake and eat it and didn't realize where the cake came from and somebody made the cake. You took the cake and you said, thank you. And he looked up and said, well, mama, if you put some ice cream on it, I'll say it again. <laughs> well, you know what? If mama don't put the ice cream on it, just be thankful for the cake. Be thankful. One of the reasons we lose so much is because we don't appreciate what we do have. We lose relationships. We lose, we lose so much because we didn't have a sense of appreciation. You ever think about the opportunities you've had in life, maybe to become a better person, to become a good student? Let's think, for example, when you were in middle school and high school and you played around and you didn't do what you should have done and you just didn't take advantage of the opportunity. Why? Because you were not thankful for it. You should have been more thankful for that opportunity, but because you just took it for granted, you just let it pass through your hands. And now you look back over and say, boy, I was blessed and I didn't know it. And so many times we're blessed and we don't know it. And that's why it's important to be thankful so that those blessings won't pass through our hands. I once heard about a realtor and um, a man contacted this realtor and said to the realtor, my grandfather was on this property. It was a farm. My grandfather was on this farm and he passed it down to my daddy and I'm here I am 60 years old and I'm tired of this farm. I've been living on this farm all my life. I need something better. I want you to sell it. So he said, okay. And so he drew up a bill of sale on the house and and before he put it in the newspaper, he went to the man and said, I'm ready to put the, the bill of sale, the, uh, the advertisement about the sale in the newspaper. And the man said, well, read it to me. He said, for sale, house, seven acres, beautiful farmhouse, trees, rolling hills, well-stocked lake. He said, S read that again, but read it real slow like. And the realtor said, for sale, nice farmhouse, barn, rolling hills, nice trees, uh, seven acres, a pond uh, filled with fish. 
And the man said, uh-uh, uh-uh, I'm not selling. He said, what do you mean you're not selling? And the man said to the realtor, I'm not selling because all my life I've been looking for a place like that. I'm not selling. Well, he had it all along and was about to lose it because he didn't appreciate what he had. <coughs> Excuse me. What about you? Are you grateful for what you have? Let me give you several things that you can always be grateful for very quickly. Number one, be thankful. Thankful for the grace God has shown you. Thankful that God did not give you what you know you deserve. That's called grace. I don't care how bad things are. Things could be a whole lot worse. And the reason they're not as bad as they could be is because of the grace of God. You look back over your life and say, my God, this is what could have happened and this is what should have happened. But God was good to me. Amen. Be thankful for the grace that God has shown you. Be thankful for the plan God has for you. God's got a plan for your life. God's got a plan, <coughs> excuse me, for your life. And you can be thankful that that plan is opening up. You, you got to think about it. God's got a plan for your life. You don't hear anything else I say. Hear this. Of all the things I've said and all these powerful points to ponder, in the name of Jesus, I want you to know that God still has a plan for your life. I hear Jeremiah saying, God says, for I know the plans that I have for you, plans not to harm you, plans to give you hope and plans to give you a future. You start rejoicing with your broke sick self and say, still, God has a plan for my life. And maybe God is using these things to get me ready for that plan. You be thankful for the grace God shown you. You be thankful for the plan God has for you. You be thankful for the changes God has made in you. You're not what you want to be. You're not what you ought to be, but you're not what you used to be. You used to be a mess, but now you're a miracle. You used to be mean and look at you now. You used to be insecure, but now you got some swag. When you look at how uninformed, how ignorant, how crazy you used to be, how the dumb things you used to do just a few years ago, and look at the progress that you have made, you should be thankful for the changes that God has made in you. You used to cuss some folk out, but now you got patience. You just, you just, okay, whatever. That's not, that's not the old you. You're a new you. That's the grace of God. Be thankful for the changes God has made in your life. And then finally, be thankful for the home God is getting ready for you when you go to heaven. Because Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you that where I am, there you may be also. So you've got a place in heaven. And Paul says, if you want to be mentally stable, rejoice in the Lord. Practice the presence of the Lord. The Lord is at hand. Don't worry about anything. Pray about everything and be thankful. Be thankful for the goodness of God and see what happens to your mind when you put these principles into practice. Let's pray together. Lord, thank you for your word for this week, for this journey. Uh, we have not been ourselves, but we see now our mind is starting to mind because we're starting to mind the Word of God. In Jesus' name, amen. Don't forget, everybody needs a church home. And if you don't have a church home, well, look, we invite you to become a part of St. Stephen Baptist Church, our online community. Please contact us, email us at info at sscLive.org, info at sscLive.org. 
www.ebenezer.org. Become a digital disciple. Become a part of the online community, St. Stephen Baptist Church. And tomorrow's the last day, and we're going to go through two quick points, because I want to give you seven points tomorrow, and this is the whole culmination of this entire week. Please be with us. Share this with somebody else. Invite someone to be with us also tomorrow on Saturday. As we prepare to go, don't forget what we always say. You know it. Stay safe. Stay sane. And if you can, do what? Stay home. See you tomorrow.